بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على خير خلقه أجمعين حبيب قلوبنا وشفيع ذنوبنا أبي القاسم المصطفى محمد وعلى أهل بيته الطيبين الطاهرين المعصومين المطهرين المكرمين Respected brothers and sisters, viewers, السلام عليكم ورحمة الله تعالى وبركاته When it comes to exemplary qualities and virtuous characteristics, you and I are inspired by a group of individuals who are indeed selfless, but we take them as our role models in every sense of the word. They are, of course, the glorious family of salvation, the purity of the mankind's efforts placed into their existence and indeed they are the ships of salvation the Ahl al-Bayt alayhum as -salam. when we look at a quality that was indeed demonstrated and exemplified by them such as generosity and magnanimity you find that each and every one of them stood out as an example for others to emulate Imam al-Hasan al-Mujtaba, peace and blessings be upon him, the second holy Imam was known as Karim Ahl al-Bayt, the generous of the Ahl al-Bayt. This doesn't mean that the other members of the glorious household did not necessarily possess this quality, but rather it was as a demonstration that there were a number of instances in his glorious life that this was recorded, but if you examine the biography in each and every one of the 14 ma'asumin, you come to that conclusion that they were all the people of generosity and uh, kindness. Starting, of course, with the Holy Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam. Uday ibn Hatim al-Ta'i uh, was an individual who embraced the religion of Islam due to the generosity of the Holy Prophet. Hatam al-Ta'i was an individual, the father of Uday, was a man whom people used to give or use as an example of generosity. So if the Arabs talk about karam or generosity, they refer to a man by the name of Hatam al-Ta'i. Sometimes when people come to his house, he would give them everything that he owned. As an example, if he had one sheep, he would slaughter that sheep. If he had ten, he would provide them with such uh, food. His son would say that when my sister was taken captive, she pleaded with the Prophet to be released and he freed her. When he freed her, I went to visit the Prophet, went to see how he lived his life. I saw that he loved the poor and he freed the captive. وَيَرْحَمُ الصغير, And he was kind and merciful upon the youngsters. وَيَعْرَفُ قَدَرَ الْكَبِيرِ And he knew the status and the position of the elders. وَمَا رَأَيْتُ أَجْوَدَ وَلَا أَكْرَمَ مِنْهِ Subhanallah. Uday ibn Hatim says, I have not seen an individual more generous and more magnanimous and kind than the Prophet of Islam. I have not seen anyone as kind and more generous as the Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him and his holy progeny. And that's why Uday ibn Hatim himself embraced religion of Islam. Like you look at the example of the glorious Ahl al-Bayt, Sayyidatul Nisa Fatima al-Zahra, salawatullahi wa salamu alayha. Whether it was the eve of her wedding when she gave away her dress, whether it was the exemplary actions of three days of breaking their fast with water because they would give all their food to the poor, the orphan or the captive, whether it was the story of the famous story of the necklace in which 
the Sayyida, peace be upon her, the Lady of Light, would give this to the needy individual who then went on to sell it to Ammar ibn Yasir who donated it or gave it back to the Prophet who gave it to his beloved daughter Sayyida Fatima. This and many examples highlight the kindness of this holy family. In chapter 59, verse number 9, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us of a story that was particularly important to the lives of the Ahl al-Bayt alayhum as -salam. This was when an individual came to visit the Messenger of Allah, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam, and said to him, Ya Rasulullah, I am a visitor, but I am hungry, I need to be fed. The Prophet, peace be upon him and his family, sent a message to his wives and said, is there anyone who is able to feed this person? And they said, no, we are not able to, we don't have any food at home. In the mosque, there was a man who would not say no to any act of kindness, who would seize the opportunity and would not let it go. And that was Amir al-Mu'mineen, Ali ibn Abi Talib salam. He said to the Rasulullah, Ya Rasulullah, I would take this man. He took him home. Sayyida Fatima, who had prepared food sufficient only for the family, herself, Amir al-Mu'mineen, Imam al-Hassan and Hussein. When this man was taken home, Sayyida Fatima and Amir al-Mu'mineen discussed amongst themselves that this man should be given the food entirely. And that would need the children to be put to sleep. And that would need a way in which he would only eat the food without Amir al sharing the food with him. Look at the extent of altruism that the Ahl al-Bayt possessed. So what they did was they switched off the candle. It was dark. So this man would only see the food right in front of him. He would eat. He would not see that Imam Ali salam would not be eating with him. And the next day, Amir al-Mu'mineen was told by the Prophet of Islam sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam that there is a verse that has been revealed due to the actions of the Ahl al-Bayt. The verse says, وَيُؤْثِرُونَ عَلَىٰ أَنفُسِهِمْ وَلَوْ كَانَ بِهِمْ خَصَاصَةً They think about others before themselves even though they needed it. And so you'll find this and many other examples demonstrated by this holy household. As a quality, generosity known as sakha or karam is one that the teachings of the religion of Islam highlight in many uh, places. The Prophet of Islam, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam, in a famous narration says, As-Sakhiyu qareebun min Allah, qareebun min al-Nas, qareebun min al-Jannah. The generous one is close to Allah, is close to people, and is close to paradise. And, ba'idun min al-Nar, far from hellfire. At the same time, conversely, the miserly, al-Bakhilu, ba'idun min Allah, بَعِيدٌ مِّنَ النَّاسِ بَعِيدٌ مِّنَ الْجَنَّةِ قَرِيبٌ مِّنَ النَّارِ That the miserly is, a, is far from God, is far from people. People don't like to deal with people who are stingy or miserly. And far from Jannah, but they are close to hell. In this narration in Biharul Anwar, volume 73. The Prophet of Islam, peace and blessings be upon him, says that generosity in السَّخَاءَ أَشَجَرَةٌ مِّنْ أَشْجَارِ الْجَنَّةِ لَهَا أَخْصَانٌ مُتَدَلِّيَةٌ That generosity is a tree that is found in paradise, has many branches in this world. Whomsoever is generous in this world will hold on to some of the branches of this tree that it's originating from paradise. And it will eventually lead them to Jannah. So by holding on to that branch or that part of that tree in this world, it will eventually give them and grant them eternal bliss, happiness and prosperity. The Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him and his holy progeny in a narration says that people are of four kinds. Sakhiyun wa karimun, bakhilun wa laimun. So the classification by the Holy Prophet is made according to the following. As-Sakhi, 
the, the, the generous one, الَّذِي يَأْكُلْ وَيَعْطِي is the one who eats themselves and gives. الكريم لا يأكل ويعطي The magnanimous, the extra generous, they themselves, they don't eat and they give. البخيل, the miserly, يأكل ولا يعطي They themselves at least eat or they keep it themselves. They keep their food or their wealth for themselves, but they don't share it with others. They don't give to others. Worse than this is uh, any person who's known as a laim, extremely uh, uh, stingy or miserly. لا يأكل ولا يعطي Neither do they give to others, neither do they spend on themselves and their family. And we have examples uh, that perhaps we have ourselves uh, come across of people who are under that particular caliber. Amir al-Mu'mineen Ali ibn Abi Talib sallallahu wa sallam alayhi in a beautiful narration. And perhaps there is a need for us to reflect on this narration. It's truly wonderful to look at certain ahadith and to, what I would say, press the pause button in our lives. Not to listen to a narration, be inspired by it for a short period of time, but really keep it ongoing in our lives. Maybe write it down somewhere in our phones or place it in our wall or keep a reminder about some narration such as this. He says, Ajibtu lishakhi al-bakhil. I am surprised about the wretched, miserly individual. Yata'ajjalu al-faqra alladhi minhu harib. He or she is making the poverty that they are running away from something that will befall upon them. وَيَفُوتُهُ الْغِنَى الَّذِي إِيَّاهُ طَلِبْ And the richness or the wealth that they are looking for, they're missing out on. How? فَيَعِيشُ فِي الدُّنْيَا عَيْشَ الْفُقَرَاءِ They live in this world, the life of the poor. وَيُحَاسَبُ فِي الْآخِرَةِ حِسَابُ الْأَغْنِيَاءِ And on the day of judgment, they'll be held accountable like a rich or wealthy or affluent individual will be held accountable. What does this beautiful narration mean? How do we understand it? Well, Imam says, I'm surprised. You have individuals who are so miserly, who are so stingy, they're holding on to their wealth, and they are afraid of poverty. But the more they're in this state, the more Allah will make them fearful, and the more they will remain in the state of fear in poverty. Or perhaps they might encounter more poverty. And they are running away from the wealth that they actually seek. So in this world, they live as people who are poor. And in Akhirah, they'll be held accountable as people who are rich. So they're not necessarily going to enjoy this world. But in the hereafter, they'll be held accountable as if they had the wealth and they enjoyed the wealth so to speak. So Imam Ali Salam says, think about it, reflect on this, because sometimes it is needed for us to understand how we can utilize the resources and the blessings and the favors of the Almighty Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala that have been bestowed upon us. In the Holy Quran, we have a beautiful notion, and that is Allah wa Ta'ala constantly uses the description that certain people are muflihun, they are victorious, they are successful. Twelve times in the Quran we find the description for certain people that they are indeed victorious, muflihun. Um, one of them is in chapter 64 verse 16. Allah says, فَاتَّقُوا اللَّهَ مَا اسْتَطَعْتُمْ Observe God consciousness and piety as much as possible. وَأَسْمِعُوا وَأَطِيعُوا وَأَنْفِقُوا خَيْرًا لِأَنفُسِكُمْ Listen, obey, and give what is good for yourself. You see, one individual beautifully says, when I donate and when I give and help others, I may be helping their dunya, but they're helping my akhirah. It's a tool. It's a means. It's a way to attain righteousness, virtue, and to attain the reward from the Almighty Subhanahu Wa Taala. 
Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَأَنْفِقُوا خَيْرًا لِأَنْفُسِكُمْ You think that by giving and by being generous, you're actually helping others? Well, indeed you are. But Allah says, it's actually coming back to you. خَيْرًا لِأَنْفُسِكُمْ For your own self is good. Then he says, وَمَنْ يُوقَ شُحَّ نَفْسِهِ فَأُولَٰئِكَ هُمُ الْمُفْلِحُونَ Now, the description of muflihun is used, but it says, وَمَنْ يُوقَ شُحَّ نَفْسِهِ Whomsoever is able to break the tendency for self-centeredness or egoistic thinking. What is this shuhun nafs? How do we understand it and what does it actually relate to? Well, shuh in Arabic is worse than being miserly. Imam Ja'far ibn Muhammad al Sadiq, salawatullahi wa salam alayhi, the sixth holy Imam, describes what it means to be a shahih. He says, as shahihu ashaddu min al bakhil. To be referred to as shahih is sadly a state worse than miserliness or stinginess. Why? Because the following exib are, are exhibited by somebody who has, God forbid, these kind of characteristics. يَشُحُّ عَلَى مَا فِي أَيْدِ النَّاسِ حَتَّى لَا يَرَى فِي أَيْدِ النَّاسِ شَيْئًا إِلَّا تَمَنَّى أَنْ يَكُونَ لَهُ بِالْحَلِّ وَالْحَرَامِ not only do they not give, not only do they hold back, but when they see others having something that they themselves don't have, what do they do? They immediately wish for that thing which people have to be taken away from them, what in whichever way possible. وَلَا يَشْبِعُ وَلَا يَنْتَفِعْ بِمَا رَزَقَهُ اللَّهِ They uh, are not satisfied or content with whatever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has indeed given them. Allah wa ta'ala says, if you and I are individuals who are defeating that tendency within ourselves, if we are able to break that tendency to uh, worry about, you know, uh, what others have which may not we may not have and so on and so forth, and at the same time be kind and generous enough to give to people, then we are victorious. Ula'ika humul muflihun. And the narrations of the Ahl al Bayt, my dear brothers and sisters, as a message to myself first and foremost, and to all my brothers and sisters and friends out there. The narrations tell us this the more generous we are in life, the greater love and compassion that we spread, the more merciful we become the more kindness we espouse and become beacons of. And at the same time, it is a promise of the Almighty that the rizq and the sustenance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala definitely increases. Amir al-Mu'mineen wa Mawla al-Muttaqeen Ali ibn Abi Talib sallallahu alayhi wa says, Alaykum bil hasna'i wa husn al-khuluq. Ensure that you do righteousness as well as or alaykum bis-sakha'i wa husn al-khuluq rather you must be uh, generous and have good akhlaq fa'innahuma yazidan al-rizq because they will increase the rizq wa yujiban al-mahabba they will increase love in society love and kindness in amongst the people you may have come across recently the tragedy that many people in the United Kingdom were indeed heartbroken to see the fire in this Grenfell Tower in London. Across the world, people recognized that unfortunately more than 80 people lost their lives due to this fire. But thereafter, the generosity of the people was something that touched the heart of so many people. Yes. You saw people left, right, and center, irrespective of their faith, denomination, background, religion, color. They would send food and clothing and all kinds of necessities in their tons. Yes, it was sent to this particular uh, area out of the kindness that people had and out of the very humanitarian tendency that people exhibited. This was something that many people 
acknowledged and they praised. It is something that is beloved to people and certainly brought the community together, certainly increased the love amongst the community themselves. That's why we find that indeed great examples of generosity are the Ahl al-Bayt who would send a message to the people that shaitan would want to stop us from being generous, would want us think, to think 500 times before helping out someone and maybe even more than we actually thought would be needed. One day, a man, an Arabi, a Bedouin, came into the mosque of the Holy Prophet in Medina. After the sad shahada of Imam al Hassan al Mujtaba. When he came inside the mosque, he saw in the corners different people sitting. So, in one corner, he saw a man by the name of Utbah bin Abi Sufyan who was sitting there. He saw uh, Abdullah bin Zubair sitting in one corner, and he saw Imam al Hussein ibn Ali ibn Abi Talib sitting in the corner of the masjid. He went went to, first of all, Utbah or Abdullah, whichever, as far as asking for help. He said, I have killed a cousin of mine by accident and I have to pay the diyya, I have to pay the punishment, you know, the blood money. Can you help me? One of them, first of all, gives him 100 dirhams. 100 dirhams at that time was nothing really in terms of what the sheer volume of the extent of this, how much this person had to pay. So he said to that person, to either Utba or, Abid, or Abdullah ibn Zubair, I'm not interested. I, I need the full amount. He goes to the second person and he says to him, I'll give you 200. Or says to a slave, give him 200 dirhams. Once again, this is nothing. It's not sufficient. He comes to whom? He comes to Imam Sayyid al-Shuhada Aba Abdullah al Hussein alayhi salam. When he says to him that I need help, this is what's happened. Imam alayhi salam gives him 10,000 dirhams. Did it stop there? No. He gives him another 10,000. This Arabi is bewildered. He melts in the face of this unbelievable generosity. He says to Imam al-Hussein, 10,000, then an additional 10,000. Imam says that first 10,000 is so that you pay the blood money. The second 10,000 is so that you spend on yourself. Get yourself, you know, in a, in a, in a proper state. Spend, spend on your family. Yes. Look at this. Look at this example that the Ahl al-Bayt give with this particular result and how it produced such kind following and such kind love by the people. They recognized that if, I, if we wanted to know house of generosity, we'd go to the Imam of the time. And that's why people learned from such examples, such as Ali al-Akbar, Rizwanullahi ta'ala alayhi, the oldest son of Imam al Hussein alayhi salam, we are told that he would say to his mother, Oh mother, let the burning or the, the, the fumes or the smoke of the burning of the wood in preparation for the food continue so that people see and smell that we have food so that they would come and ask us so that we can give them, so that we can provide for them. And therefore, in today's day and age where materialism and love of possession is so profound, it is uh, very much part and parcel of people's thinking that I must have this and I must uh, acquire this. It is also an invitation to us from the Quranic teachings, from the actions and the virtues demonstrated by this holy household that we should break those idols within us. We should shatter those egoistic tendencies and give for the sake of Allah and be charitable and place the smile on the faces of the orphans and the needy. Help our brothers and sisters who have requested us to assist them for the sake of Allah and not necessarily fear 
poverty or feel fear that our wealth will diminish, but rather Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will definitely increase it and bless it and reward us amply in this world and the hereafter. We pray to him subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant us a tawfiq to be of the generous ones, to grant us the opportunity to really understand the illustrious life of the Ahlul Bayt and to follow in their footsteps. وَآخِرُ الدَّعْوَانَا أَنْ الْحَمْدُ لِلَّهِ رَبِّ الْعَالَمِينَ وصل اللهم وسلم وبارك على نبي الرحمة محمد المصطفى وعلى أهل بيته الطيبين الطاهرين المعصومين